What's going on everybody? I'm Andre. This is my brother Austin. Today we got a really cool log that we're going to show you. It is the Moorhead Homestead Maple Log. It's a 200 year old maple with a lot of history. Austin's going to tell you a little bit about that history. Yeah, so John Milton Moorhead returned home from the Civil War in 1865. That's when he built the first home on this property. In 1877, they built the house that is currently there now. Five generations later, my buddy Eric Moorhead gave us a call about the tree. Yeah, so this tree was actually starting to lose limbs. And so Eric was worried that, you know, it was going to fall on his kids while they were out playing. But he wanted to preserve the tree while it was still salvageable. So what we're actually going to do is we're actually going to cut biscuits out of it. And so that, I mean, if you just look at the size, I mean, it's so big, they can turn them into kitchen tables or coffee tables, whatever they really want to do with it. So only thing left is get it on the mill and let's get it going. The reason we decided to cut biscuits or uh, cookies, whichever you want to call them, is the people that originally cut this tree down uh, wanted to be able to move it a little bit easier, so they cut it in half. Uh, they didn't quite get all the way through it, uh, so we ended up finishing the rest of it off and cutting the rest of it in half. And we wanted to get some really unique pieces out of this. And with the diameter of this tree, it you know it was it was really the only option. And so as we get the log loaded on the mill here. Uh, you'll see that we get some really awesome pieces cut out of this. All right, now that we got the log on the mill, what we're going to do is we're going to start slabbing this out. Uh, we're going to cut them at five inches thick. Um, through the drying process, you can get some warping going on. Uh, so we want to leave enough meat on the, on the slab. That way at the end, we get nice thick tables. Uh, we're going to use our big slabbing mill. Um, this thing can cut up to six, six inches. Uh, we're going to need most of that with this thing. It's, it's a pretty big log. So uh, we're going to get milling. Get it going. So when you're milling, you're going to eventually run into some casualties. We lost the blade, and we're going to have to lose the bottom half of this log. Uh, we started running into some metal. We got quite a few spots here that had metal, and it's not really worth keep going. We only got one or two left in this. Um, but we already got some really nice slabs out of this one, and we're going to move on from here, and we're going to start cutting the top. So we came out to the Moorhead Homestead to the site of where this tree stood for 200 years and we wanted to talk to Eric Moorhead, the owner of the property now. I uh, wanted to get a little bit of a family history from you and uh, who started the homestead and, and passed down through the generation. Yeah, so my great-great-grandfather, John Milton Moorhead, um, when he came home from the Civil War, he homesteaded this place. 
he grew up up by Macomb area, about four miles north of here. And then um, my great grandfather, Dallas Hodd Moorhead, grew up here. And then my grandpa, George Hartman Moorhead, grew up here. And then um, my father's also George, but he didn't grow up in this at this place. Um, and then my great aunt lived here last. And um, when she passed, a uh, Jane Feller was her name. Uh, when she passed away, her kids sold it to me, and mm. I'm honored to keep it in the family. Mm. So your your children will be the sixth generation, sixth generation that grew Correct. up in this home. Oh, yeah, that's, that's pretty yep. cool. That's, so, There's a big gap for a while, though. Yeah. <laughs> Some more heads are a little late bloomers. So, so yeah, so people at home are doing the math, and you said your great-great-grandfather served in the Civil so, War, and usually there's another great in there, but um, but you... Maybe more sometimes. Yeah, <laughs> but the more heads like that, like the settle down a little late and... and mid, have, mid late 30s, yeah. <laughs> 40s too, sometimes. Yeah. After generation after generation, it, it kind of stretches things out a little bit more than normal. Um, but, uh, the house that's here now, it's not the original house to the property, right? Correct. Right? There was a first, the first house was just a little cabin in uh, 1865 when that was built. And then, uh, around 1876 to 77 in that time frame. not sure when it was finished, but, um, that's when they, they moved into this house. And for years that, that old house was moved around the farm in, a, in multiple places. The last place before they tore it down, it was beside the silos and they would keep mineral and different feed ingredients for the cattle in there and it, so it kind of got reused yeah, just kept getting reused. Yep. so a, a little bit uh reason the reason you called us to to or the reason why you cut down the tree mm -hmm. uh kind of go go through that and tell us the reason why you unfortunately the top we had lost part of it in a storm and then um, over the course of a year or so it started getting punky you can see the bark was falling off and uh, we decided we better take it down before it fell in our laps when mm -hmm. we were sleeping. Uh, yeah, I think hanging yeah. over the house pretty good. Definitely, I think you guys saved it at the right time. Um, we we have already cut it up, and it's it's a it's a really really beautiful tree on the inside. And um, it, we appreciate you giving us a call and uh, letting us preserve your family's history through the tree. And generations down the line will be able to see the inside of the tree, when the past generations have only been able to see the outside. So. We definitely, Andre, Dad, and I appreciate you giving us a call and letting us, letting us cut up your tree and preserving it for the future. You're welcome. Mm -hmm. Glad you guys can use it. Thank you. Yep. So this is definitely by far the biggest log that we've had on the mill. Um, she's huge. She's definitely. Uh, Andre and I were watching Dad um, having a tree rodeo with the tow motor out in the driveway. So what we're going to have to do before we get started, we're going to have to go around and, and pick out some rocks yeah, from, the, be from mining, the bark. We're going to be mining for... Uh, <laughs> For stones. For stones. They're, they're pretty embedded. <laughs> Somehow he got this thing to roll uphill and almost over the road and into the ditch, but somehow it, it did not go in. So there's like a there's like a <laughs> 15 foot drop over the side of the ditch. So if it goes over, it's not coming back. So, so but he did he got it on. We're ready to get the second half of this done. Let's get to it. Got it. It's a bug.
So we had to stop the second half of this log, show everybody all the cool figure that was inside, and everything we're seeing so far. A lot of bark intrusion, and a really cool figure. And then we also found something else on a scale of one to weird of things that we find in trees. This one's coming in as strange. Uh, Eric must have uh, left his, his swimming cap on the tree at some point in time and the tree grew around it. Uh, he even cut out the hole in the top for his bald spot so he get a nice little tan up back there. Pretty sure he <laughs> missed, the, missed the pond by yeah. a mile. <laughs> He's swimming in the tree. It's another bug. So that's going to wrap up the Moorhead Homestead Maple Log. We had a blast today milling this up. We hope everybody that watched did too. Yeah, it's one of the craziest, most unique logs that we've gotten into so far. Um, just the figure that came out of this is just beautiful to see. Um, and every time a, a biscuit came off the mill, I mean, you never knew what was coming through. Yeah, I mean, even the size of these, this one alone is 73 inches across. They were just massive slabs. And we'd like to thank Eric for giving us the, this log that we were able to cut it up and, and instead of having it go to firewood, and just be able to make these nice tables. Yeah, definitely. Keep an eye out. We're going to throw these in the eye dry, get them dried out. We'll have these slabs and everything, everything we cut today we will have for sale here soon. Yeah, for sure. And uh, if you haven't subscribed yet to our channel, we ask that you subscribe. We love doing these videos. We love working together. We are so blessed that we get to do that. This is our passion, and we enjoy it so much. So hit subscribe, hit like, hit share, and until next time. See you next time. Got him. Dead. This is a big log. You think? Yeah. Did you watch Grandpa get it in here with the forklift? Yeah. yeah. Stop it. <laughs> Pay attention to what you're... Wait. Let's talk about the logs. You think it'll make a big kitchen table for somebody? Yes. Yeah. Huh? Stop. Stop. Yeah. Why are you... <laughs> All right. No. You're, you're going to make... This is going to make a horrible... All right. Actually, that was even better, I feel.